got to have. Well, what, do you, what, what do you do for them when you, when you're strapping them up? What, what's what, what's the so, routine? I've been chopping and changing through the um, through Styler glove recently. I had uh, for a couple of years. I've worn three spines in this one because um, it just it just felt it was the you know the old school theory behind having spines in your gloves is like you literally have the like solid, but it's not. It's really quite bendy, flexible plastic. But um, so so it's not like having three fingers. You've got those two, and then you've got those. No, one. Like, just these three will have the like this called a spine, so it's like a thin plastic kind of sheet that runs yeah. through it, um, which kind of just just reinforce them a little bit. But then I would always strap my little fingers heavily because these are. The, I've always if I was, the, the main problems I've had finger wise has been with my little ones because they've been on the outside. That is. That looks a bit. Yeah, because I did it. I did it cleanly once. It got put back in. But then because of that, I, I used to tape it really heavily. What, sorry, which game was that? Was that in training? Uh, no, all, all of them have been training. Right. So this was at City, this was ages ago. Um, so, sorry about that. So then this one, I used to strap it really heavily. Yeah. And it still managed to go, but because the strapping was so heavy, it wouldn't go back in. So that's why it was set not great because this one's gone and, and reset nicely. Right. So. Um, but yeah, I find these, I find the, these and these as my most vulnerable ones. So now that I'm not wearing spines on my gloves, so just, you know, it's just something that feels right for me at the moment. I, I'll take this one heavily, like all, these two joints. This joint is the one that goes the most. Yeah. So these two joints I'll tape heavily. This one, these, this one constantly hurts on both hands. The index constantly hurts. Yeah. And I'll tape these heavily and then you know, depending on how I feel, I might put a light one round. So but how long would it take you to get your hands ready for game? Um, I could do it with my eyes closed now, but I, I have to allow five minutes. But oh, five minutes? Yeah, okay, that's then, I, then I wrap up, yeah, because I know what I'm doing now. It's yeah. like, I don't even, it's, not, it's like a not even non-thought process to what you I'm doing. You must be like a boxer, the way you... Yeah, I, t I tape this for wrist support, and right. then, yeah, and then just two big heavy duty ones that cover the whole of each of these fingers. Um, and then dependent, you know, you can cut, you, your middle finger can take one on the end and sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll need yeah. to wrap it up, but... Uh, what, what, what's the wear and tear on a, on a goalkeeper's body like? Because as you we were saying, we see you throwing yourself around the train. I, I don't know, I can only speak for me, but I've only ever trained with people that, that really train hard and everyone's always been able to get through it. I think you've got to have a mentality of, yeah. if, it, if it's not physically stopping you from doing something, then you just kind of get on with it. Yeah. Um, what, you play in pain? Yeah, I th with me, I find if, if I am in pain, I'll, I'll start in pain, but if I, can get, if I can physically get through the start, then it goes, you know, with concentration, with right. mindset. Um, so the pain's in your fingers, or in the, sorry, it's in that index finger, or is it, it in it's, it, it's in it. It's, it's in everyone, you know. It, it depends. My, my body works that um, at the moment. I've only got room for one, one serious bit of pain. So, for instance, if it's my ankle at the moment, which I feel things in, build going into having that ankle problem, I, I've had like problems in my lower back and right. feeling stiffness in it. But the moment I have a, a gen, you know, some bruising or a sprain, if you like, on my ankle. My body works. That, that that's the only thing that hurts now. So, oh, is that right? so you don't, don't feel it in your back? No, my back goes. Gary Gary Lewin was telling me that um, Luzhny. Do you remember Luzhny? Oh, like Luzhny. Yeah, the fullback. So he was he was went to Ukraine and he was having chronic back pains, chronic, 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 chronic back pains. And something that would never go. Which I can yeah. kind of you know we think everyone gets it. And he came back and said I'm fully cured. What they've done is they put um, they've got a bowl filled it with bees put it on his back, stung the life out of him, stung him hard, which obviously hurt, but took away all the shooting pains because the pain focused on that. And when the, the healing of the, the sting settled, he was fine. It's, uh, it's strange how the body work. He was telling me that you can burn, if you've got like a um, you know, sciatic pain, if you, if you burn your elbow, it takes away all the pain and obviously your elbow you don't really feel anything in there do you no. in this bit so it, it deals with that and then it, it rests your body i think it's it's unless it's an, a direct break i think there's, that's there's, true there's ways of wheeling yourself out there yeah but but, you, but your hip so sorry it's your, it's your left so where do you feel it most? Uh, you feel it in the bit you you land on it, ch it chops and not really landing it's more a kicking thing landing right. is fine and landing is I think we're just we're all kind of braced for it. You don't hit from a great height, really. It's 
it's yeah. more up and, and down. So landing, unless you're unless you're training on you know a really really bad pitch, which yeah. I struggle to find now, you know, because they're so. I think it was you know a few years ago it might have been the case, but there's always a you can always find an area to train. Yeah. Around. Do you ever worry? Because you because you dive a lot at strikers' feet. I yeah. Mean, I was just going through the footage yesterday. I mean, you're sort of you know, messy with people like that when you're diving at the feet. Obviously, you focus on the timing. But do you ever think I'm going to get a boot in my face here? Uh, sometimes, but um, yeah, I've, I've I've had a few hits, but I don't think it really crosses your mind until you hit, and then you get that kind of you hear the impact. Um, which stuns you, and then you just you, you wait, and then you I, I can't tell what's happened. I can't tell if I'm cut or not. So I wait and, wait till I see the doctor, and you can read a doctor's face. Really? So if they're if they're calm, you can be calm. But if not, you know sometimes you just need putting back together. But I think it, it kind of comes as long. I don't mind being hit as long as it's not um, on purpose. Yeah. You know it's, I don't. I think you've just got to take what, whatever comes. But you don't. There's 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 no fear element going in there because you can't. You've seen some of the. I mean, Edison obviously got when he got hit by the yeah, yeah. At the start of the season. But I think if you spoke to him, you know, he headed the ball and it hurt him. But I don't think it would mentally affect him. Right. I think it's just it's just a hit. It's just a hit. And, you know, as long as it doesn't hold you back, and it didn't. You played two, three days later. Yeah. You know, I've had them where you know you, you bust your eye or whatever. As long as you can put it back together, I think you've, you've got to be ready to go again. You must be quite brave. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. It's. I think with the with the competition and, and the way it is, it's not like um, you can't really afford for something that's not that important to affect what you're trying to do. Right. So you know, People no one's going to be stupid. Yeah, I, like I. That's how I feel. I don't. I feel that um, if something's going to physically. It's stupid, and you and you need to stop. Yeah. Then I think you stop. But if there's something that you can get on with, in my opinion, I think uh, I think you just get on with it. Yeah. But, I mean, what Pedacek went through. Yeah, that's that's diff That's crazy, you know. And, and that was that was huge. And you know, cons considered, uh, you know, I've always considered straight after I've been hit badly that you know it's, it's a good idea. But what he's done is is yeah. amazing because you know. That could have been it for him, you know, yeah. a stray knee in the side of his skull, uh, and it looked, it was all quite calm, and it could have been the, not the end of football, it could have been the end of him. So yeah. the fact that he gets on with what he's doing is, is you know, a massive respect to him. When a goalkeeper's had an injury, would you send them a message saying, "Hope you're okay"? Or if it's a friend of mine, it, yeah. otherwise it would be one of those when you when you see him, you know, you, you wish him the best and things like that. But um, who are your friends as goalkeepers? Most most of the people I've worked with, I've stayed in contact with. Um, you know, it's, it's quite um, it's quite a funny business. You know, you kind of tend to have some sort of relationship or conversation with most most people that you play against. Because I think there's a general, um, you know, there's a general respect there and an yeah. interest uh, in what in what we're doing. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know how everyone works, but I know the guys that I talk to and stuff, and you know, they watch how things happen and, and have opinions on things, and, yeah. and we'll, we'll discuss. It was quite interesting joining the uh, in the Barcelona game two, three years ago. Um, sorry, have you got no, no, sorry. Are you sure? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, Jack Butland tweeted during the game. He said that's to show how you deal with an attacker one on one because you're making all those saves. I think you made seven big saves in that game. We saw name on. Yeah, um, I mean, what was it, what 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 was that like? I remember seeing you the week before, and you obviously saved the penalty against Messi. Yeah. But what what was? Um, it was it was funny. It was funny, and in in it was it was a strange kind of atmosphere because we were getting pummeled. Yeah. But we were we were still had a way in. You know, we got a penalty, and to Stegen saved it. And it was just it, it was a constant kind of barrage, and I was just. I was trying to stay in, just trying to keep us in the game as best yeah. I could to, to mount an attack, but um, you know, in, this, in the huge size of the new camp, and you've got the, the city fans right at the top. I had three of my friends that were kind of sat in the family bit, and I could see them, and they were just, it was just funny, it was just funny pulling, being able to zone out and, and laugh at them because of just the madness that was going on in front of me. What, because they were admiring what you were doing, yeah, or there was just a, the Alamo? It, yeah, it was just, it was just a, it was a strange, um, a strange feeling because we were. It was just a strange game because it was literally they were just they were just coming at us so hard and we were managing to find a way to repel it and you know the game looked like it would 
one more and it was over. I think it was. I think we were two. Yeah, I think we were two nil down on aggregate. We were two goals behind on aggregate, one way or another. So that one more would have killed it because it was getting into the second half. But then you know, one more, from, one goal from us would have meant that. Yeah. You know, if, we'd, if we'd managed to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Score two. It was like we. It was. It was just on a really strange knife edge, and yeah. they just kept coming. Do, do, are you aware of when a player's come through? Are you aware of who it is? I mean, obviously it's Messi, but do you just are you just simply focused in on, or are you aware of Messi can do? Yeah, what he can do? I think you are. I think you you know you've kind of got to play the play the odds, especially when it when it comes down to if there's more than one of them in the last year, you've got a decision to make. Yeah, you know if they've got a, a very simple square pass. You've got a decision whether you where you try and cover both or where you go hard with the one. You know, depending on where what the control's like for the ball. In a split second, you've got to do that. Yeah, you do, and you, you know you get it wrong sometimes. But I think you've got to be aware that um, you know if someone's being chased. There's not many messies out there, and not everyone's as cool and calm as him. So yeah. you know, some not everyone's got the peace of mind to not be afraid of someone galloping behind them. So sometimes you don't want to commit because. You know, you want to let them make their own mistake, yeah. and not give them the goal. And you make split decisions in, in what you're thinking in in a very small amount of time. Yeah, it's quite nice. Suarez came and embraced yeah. you. Yeah, it's quite respectful. Though, it was it? it was good. I've always had good battles with him, and you know, you, you, you build you kind of build relations, not big relationships, but when you've played against someone a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's a there's definitely a mutual, I'm always. I've always got the utmost respect for the people that I play against, and some people like to engage, some people don't. When you say engage, so talking, would you talk? Would you talk just to a, opponent, would you? Just a, a big, you know, a good goal, or a, you know, you, if you make a good save of someone that, you know, sometimes they'll come and give you. A t it's nothing important. It's just a tap, but it's right. kind of just kind of a mutual respect, and uh, that's yeah. how I like to play the game. But not everyone. Is in that mindset, and I get that. But the, the ones that are is nice to, yeah, it's nice to kind of interact with. You got that in the Dortmund game, didn't you? When you had that amazing yeah. sell against Gundogan and Gertzi, yeah, they were, three three saves from Gertzi, and then Lewandowski late on as well. Never come what, what, what was that? It's just uh, you're always rolling your eyes. I mean, was it like the Alamo down? Yeah, well, yeah, that played. was that was when they were. We knew Dortmund were good, but we didn't, you know, they weren't, that was the start of their, yeah. you know, when they were really on fire. And we knew we had a you know, kind of attacking team that was coming again. We were new to the Champions League. Yeah. Um, but we were kind of under the impression that the home games in, in that group were going to be, you know, we were going to be more probably more in control. Yeah. And they just, they just thrashed us. They just, they were, they were too quick. They were everywhere, and you know they were striking. And you know I had, I had a really good night that night. It was, a, it was a really of those saves. I mean the Royce one. I think when you dived at his feet, was that? Yeah, I'm, I think I got the tiniest touch. Um, my first save, I touched, got the tiniest touch to a shot that hit the post. I yeah. don't know if that was Goethe. Yeah, it? people were sure whether yeah. it touched or not. But that was, that one felt good. But then they, they still managed to score, um, which might have been Schürrle. And then... Um, Gundogan got, I think. Oh, was it Gundogan? Yeah. The most important thing was we got a penalty late on and Mario, Mario scored it and, and we managed to get the point. Yeah. Because it was... Um, was, that our, was, that our, was that our first year in the Champions League or second? Uh, 2012, so yeah. Yeah, it was our first year yeah. in the Champions League. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No, second, it was our second and we'd struggled in it. And to get a point was really important. So yeah. I think we managed to. I'm not sure if we did, but it was one of the first times we were close to the group stages. Yeah. To fast forwarding a bit to the um, the game against Slovenia, yeah. where you made that extraordinary save. And I mean, the back the back page of the Daily Mirror is it's just the greatest save ever. And then everyone compared it with the with the Banks one. Yeah. What I'm mean, talk, talk me through that one because I think you had you saved it one hand and then you pushed it away. Yeah, it was it was um you know we struggled that game. I think Sam had just gone. And I think Gareth was yeah. was into yeah. it, and um, we weren't. You know, you know we, we struggled in the game. You know, All Black was playing down the other end. He made yeah. some good saves. He's a really good keeper. But um, yeah, we were a bit uncertain in the game. I remember just the guy got the header. And sometimes when some, when something flashes past you, you can't move. And I just remember going after it, saving it. I didn't know I'd done the second bit. Yeah, really. At the time, I didn't know I'd done that. So that must have just been instinct because 
looking back now, if it had hit the bar, it would have probably fell to the guy yeah. who was here. And I just, it's just, it's all kind of a blur after you do it. Um, do, you, do you look back on saves like that? Are you very much move yeah. on to the next game? You do. I, I look back on them if someone else did them as well, you know, that was a, right. in, in my mind, that was a really good save and an interesting save. The fact that I did it is great, but if it were down, if, if All Black had done it in the same game, I'd watch back that because right. it, it interests me, kind of thing. So who do, who do you watch back? I mean, who, who impresses you out there at the watch, moment? Now, it's, it's so easy to find a compilation, you know, you, yeah. you'll get weekly saves from Liga and from you know La Liga and what, does the club get you those or you get them off YouTube? Or no, you've got them off yeah, the channel, I'll just or? see them and, and I'll, I'll always keep an eye on them. You know, keep an eye on goalkeeper clubs and keep an eye on everything. There's, yeah, there's definitely a little world in a world, uh, and there's a lot of people, a lot more people interested than than you imagine. So um, yeah, I managed to see everything from everywhere. I think the guy did. Um, there was, this, was it Saudi Arabian that Real Madrid played in the semi-final of the yeah that's right yeah Club World Cup yeah, unbelievable yeah. Kind yeah. Of game so all kind of games like that and his style was totally different to what we'd see on Saturday at, yeah you know West Ham Huddersfield so it, it's good to I like to see all these kind of things it's, yeah it's, so uh, who, who impresses you of current goalkeepers I, I think to Stegen is phenomenal at the moment um, I knew he was good. I knew he was good and I thought he was a good goalkeeper. I didn't know he was as good as, as he's turning out. In, in, in what way? Well, he, he's ridiculous with his feet. I've never seen right. anyone so calm and really... Well, in terms of distribution or in terms of saves? Uh, distribution. Right. And now, uh, because he was playing, he played Champions League and Bravo played League, so that's yeah. when we were playing. And, I, and he came out, I think they managed to win the Champions League with him just coming in for the Champions League, yeah. which is unbelievable in, in, in its own, own way. And, uh, and then every time I played him or watched him, he just makes, he's very set, he's got his big massive hands uh, and he's just comfortable, he's comfortable, in, he make, he's very comfortable in all the saves he makes. Yeah. And he's been really in Barca, a, a romp in the league, but he's yeah. been really good this season. Um, you know, we've got our own boys, I think they're doing really well. But, um, what, the English ones? Yeah, the it? English boys, right. you know, Pope, Butland, Bigfoot, Tom, Big Phrase. You know, I think they've got, I think there's a lot of talent in this league. I played against a guy, Dean Henderson, for Shrewsbury, you know. Yeah. He's barely let a goal in this season. Obviously, I've got an eye, an eye on Shrewsbury and sure. they're doing really well. I think De Gea is just defies the, you know, he keeps, he's, he's so simple in his approach, but he just saves everything, everything that's possible for him to save, he will save. But he does so much with his feet, how does he manage that? I think that's the style that he became comfortable with at right. Atletico Madrid, I mean, he's got his coach now that, his coach now is the same one that he had at Atletico, I think. Right. Um, because his, his, his style is more back to use his feet. Because if you forward your your the lower balls, if you're more if your weight's more forward, because he's back, I think he's able to get to things high because his, his weight's kind of central rather than forward. Because he trusts that he can deal with things with his feet, right. and, he's, and he's very quick and, and very calm. In, in but is he almost falling backwards as he's waiting for the? No, he, he sure. can't. His his balance is is right. His balance is on point to be able to take his leg away and use right. his hands if he needs to. Uh, you know, he reaches across a lot. It's a different style to what I use because I'm not as comfortable with that. But um, I think he's just very balanced in what he does and very calm. And yeah. Kind of puts a lot of a lot of pressure on the on the striker to beat him rather than you know giving them a goal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's just. His performance against Arsenal recently, I was, yeah. I was almost, sure. you know, it was brilliant. Yeah. That was, and even Czech made some big saves in that game. Yeah. Get, 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 get. Kasper Schmeichel sort of talked about how he looked at other sports and particularly tennis and he looked at the serve and volley yeah. for that speed off the line. Have you, oh, you obviously know Kasper, you, know, yeah, yeah. you used to play tennis against him. Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we did. Um, yeah, I get what you're saying, but, um, you know, for me, just watching uh, the goalkeepers, you know, but like I say, because it's so varied now, and you, can, you don't just get, you're yeah. not just stuck with seeing Premier League now, you can see it from everywhere. You can see, you know, I watched, I think we had on the bus on Saturday, it was um, Real Sociedad, it was really against 
a team I don't even know in, in, in La Liga and they were, they were both small guys. Yeah. They were making some huge saves and they were like totally different to what we see in, in our league. Why is that happening? There seems to be a spread of goalkeeping styles now. I think because people are looking more wider afield. I think, right. I think if you check all the other leagues, you know, especially the kind of um, South American style leagues or, or Hispanic, Spanish kind of leagues, yeah. They're not big beasty like we associate goalkeepers with being big guys, yeah, yeah, you know, who can deal with a cross and uh, knock people out of the way. It's kind of a bit old school, but like that's not that's not all over the world how it's been in the past. Or yeah, you know, if, I'm sure you could check back old World Cups and you just get different, you see different heights and styles yeah. to a country. So I think we're just being people are being more open-minded to what they're doing. Um, yeah. Are you, are you saving with different parts? I mean, we, we saw the save you made against Palinho at yeah. Wembley, right at the death. It's yeah. a really cool save. I know yeah, friendly yeah. and all that. But I mean, that was a you stood up for him and you. Yeah, I think it's just. I think uh, I think there's no perfect way of doing things. I think the the best thing you can do is is give yourself the best chance of saving. It. And yeah. At that angle, I felt like. I could get everywhere. So he just he smashed it at my chest, and I said to you before, I think it would have been to get my hands out the way, to get my body out the way to save it with my hands would have took more time than just I knew where my post was, so I just need I needed to keep it away from the goal. So just Amazing. you just got to save it with whatever you can. You did one Ramsey with your yeah. face. That was, was that? More, that was just trying to make myself as big as possible. I yeah. just sat down. Uh, I, that's the one you know. I'm always disappointed to concede a goal. Or to concede a goal one on one, and I'm a, I wasn't looking, didn't have my body and you know or my, my shoulders in the direction of the ball. That's, yeah. that's what disappoints me. Right. Because I feel like it just you know no one's brave enough to have a ball smash at their face and keep their eyes open and, and head it because your natural reaction. But I think if, if you're all set and in the right direction and not pulling away, I think you give yourself more chance. Did you blink? Pardon? Did you blink? Oh, probably, yeah. 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 I, I just felt it skim off my head and go, I didn't. And then, right. you, and then you come round and see it and just check where it's going. Yeah, did, did Peter Schmeichel change it? Because he came in with the sort of handball, the sort of star jump. I don't know if he changed it because I grew up with him being what yeah. he did. So. Yeah. Can we get a cup? Um, what would you like? Yeah, should I get uh, an English breakfast tea, please? I'm fine, thanks for that. Thank you. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, so sorry, you you grew up with yeah, with with him doing like and and I feel like he he gave you the style to make the save that you you know when when nothing's in your favour he made yeah. saves when you had no right to make the save, which is you know the most dramatic and the, and the, and, it, and just really put people under pressure yeah because you know a goal that's probably a given you know if you three four five yards out and you got the whole goal to aim at. And, and the goalkeeper that just stands there. If, if you could be really aggressive and dominant, even though you're out of favour, you know, you're probably 40%, he's 60% likely to score, and I think you've just got to give yourself some chance of right. keeping, keeping the ball out. So how much of that that one-on-one -on -one is psychological? Like I say, there's, there's so many strikers out there, but there's, there's not many who, who can keep can keep so ice cool with them, the madness of football, the way people defend, defenders trying to get back. So I think that sometimes the coolest, the coolest one wins at the yeah. goalkeepers and, and the striker. But you know, you, you, you'll find a lot, of, a lot of goals will get scorned where people don't kick it where they want to kick it. You know, they'll swing a foot and it'll come off their heel or hit it into the floor. Um, so I didn't realise, but the lads pointed out that you know Ozil was using that kind of technique at the moment. That that that, that was deliberate, was it? Yeah. When he thinks it down and over. Now now I look at it. I didn't think at the time, but the West, two of the boys were saying he did it again. He did it again. And I look back. I've never seen him be that happy to score. So I think that's a style he's using. Style he's and it does work because you see someone swing hard. Yeah. It's almost like a slower ball in cricket. Someone right. swinging. You see the action of the foot. And the ball dies on you, even though it looks like they've swung, swung yeah. through it, and uh, yeah, and it should be coming at your face. Because it happened to me at Watford earlier this season. Um, I can't remember. Is it Rich Richarlison? Yeah. He came through and he and he hit one with his left, 
and I, um, it looked like he powered it, but looking back, he didn't mean to. But he scuffed it into the floor, and it and it it, di it dived under my hand. And that was deliberate. I don't know if his was right, but Ozil's definitely got a, a couple times it's happened now. Yeah. So he must be trying to do it. Yeah. Will, will Will you get clips of the strikers you're about to play against? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, you can get what the, the video guys now right. will give you whatever you want. If you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted a, you know, a view of them warming up, you don't even be able to get a, a close on. But you, you be able to get the camera work of what they're doing. Yeah. So you, there's nothing you can't get, in my opinion. Yeah. Do you think it's got more difficult for goalkeepers because the ball's got faster players? It, it tends to be more simulation. Uh, I don't know if it's got more difficult. It's, I think it just gets better. I think football just gets better and better. Yeah, but I mean, for, specifically for goalkeepers. Well, no, I don't think so because you know the games aren't turned to seven fours and, no, and ten threes. They're still staying pretty, pretty yeah. as they were. I think everyone just evolves. Is, is VAR good for you because it tends to crack down on events that are going on in front of you? It's, it's to be seen. The, the concept of it of, is great. Yeah, I really think it's great, but. Um, because the Bundesliga players had a vote a couple of days ago and the majority were against. I saw, I watched Torino versus um, Juventus in the, the Tim Cup the other day and they had VAR and there was a foul in the build-up to Juventus' second goal, the killer goal in the game. Um, Torino kind of stopped, Juventus kind of stopped but carried on and then um, Mandzukic scored. And no one really knew what was going on. Yeah. But the ref saw the foul and didn't give it. Got pressured, went to the VAR, and it was. And he but he saw the foul and didn't give it. If you know what I mean. So right. it was his opinion that it wasn't a foul, but it was. Yeah. So we went to the VAR and said goal, which I didn't really know how that worked because. And then they, the commentators said, well, VAR is going to be. Refs are gonna if they've seen something and let it go. They've see, physically seen yeah. it. Yeah. Why would they go to a video, see themselves yeah. seeing something, and not give it? So yeah. I think it's only gonna work unless people. the guy's shouting in his ear. Yeah, yeah. But I think a ref, you've got to be so strong-minded to be a ref. Yeah. So it, it depends how the refs want to handle it. Yeah. Did you see it last night? With, I mean, Conti was immediately going and doing this. Yeah. In the yeah. Position. I only saw. I saw the the, the second one, the one yeah. where Welbs just got his foot on the ball. Yeah. But I think it was legit. The right decision, wasn't it? I think it was legit that it should have gone to VAR. Yeah. Because it, to the. This is the Fabregas one. What? Uh, yeah. When well, yeah. Because because yeah. I, I saw it and thought, Ooh. I think everyone thought. Ooh. I think yeah. even even Welbs knew he got his foot on it. They probably yeah. thought. Ooh. Fabregas probably thought it was fouled, and it got cleared up. Yeah. So in that in that way it worked, but it's the ones where the ref made a decision, and no one else agrees with him. Yeah. Because like the cricket, like I watch cricket a lot, and um, even that, there's still confusion. Yeah. And that has been in the Ashes, like. Yeah. So. Have you been watching the Ashes? Yeah. I what the highlights? Yeah, I try and I try and nick an hour if it's um, if it's if it's if it's doable. What early morning or late night? Uh, late at night. Late at night. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm gonna, I, I like listening to it as well. I love um, I love the radio commentary. Of it. What a test match special. Yeah. Um, well, with Henry Bro from he's yeah. gone now, but. Like the, guy, the guys are funny, the guys are really funny. Be, be, because what? That's because it's what you love about cricket. It's all the sort of what's going on in the outfield, what's going yeah. on. Yeah, the and then the pigeons and and they cricket. There's all they always find a way of bringing the opposition. You know, like Glenn McGrath and people yeah. like that. And Gilchrist will commentate. Tom in there. And it? they'll they'll have a little go at each other. Yeah. Uh, I, re I really like. Do you still play? No. No. Are you not allowed to? I mean, there's some. I, I wouldn't say I'm not allowed to. Sure but I don't get any time to, and I wouldn't right. want to. I wouldn't want to needlessly risk, you know, my livelihood because I know I'll, I'll, I want to play on a finish. But um, really, you'll, you'll go. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm, I love cricket. You know, and I get I get battered for it because I'm literally. I think I'm the only guy in football who does <laughs> like cricket. <laughs> Phil Neville. Yeah, because he's like Shatu. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah, apparently so. It's England under 16's captain as well. Yeah. So yeah. Gary was with him. Yeah, I think they played with Flintoff, didn't they? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. in the old days, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the club, I mean, West Ham, they had their own cricket team. 
Yeah, they? Got, yeah, Bobby Moore and uh, Jeff Hurst, they all, yeah, they all play. There's some great pictures of them playing cricket. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, England, they, um, their first training session when they went, met up for 66, they all play cricket. There's some amazing pictures of Gordon Banks. I think he was, I think he was wicket keeper. Anyway. Um, but what, what's it like being an England fan, watching another sport? Um, I, I'm just so sticking with them. Like, I, just want, I just want them to win, and if they don't, I find I just want to, I want to just stick by them. So right. it's been tough, but you know, try and see the try and see the positives the best I can, and yeah, because um, they're really they're really interesting to follow the cricket because they are they'll dominate and dominate and dominate and then they will have it will go wrong yeah and then they'll dominate again um, I think they're, they're really interesting to follow yeah. do you mind you must admire people like Jimmy Anderson yeah. because I mean the way he keeps on doing it and he I seems a pretty humble them. guy as well I admire all I think they're awesome like Stuart Broad as well um, you know Cook what, you know how yeah to be captain and, and what and, yeah I think I think they're great I think Joe Root is fantastic love yeah. the keepers love Besto, love Butler um, Moeen I you know I used to play kind of county cricket against him did you well, against mm. Moeen really yeah he was at Warwickshire he was like a fast bowler it was weird really yeah and then um, yeah now he's you know doing what he's doing with England it's I, I, I love all the, the different the different traits, yeah. and, you know, the, the way the 2020 has grown and even the 50 over game now, which is in danger of being boring, is all really good to watch. But, but, but test for you is still yeah. the pinnacle. Yeah, I really enjoy yeah. the test matches. Have you been? Have you ever been to an Ashes match? Uh, I went to one in, in Old Trafford last right. time. Last time, I think Peterson scored 100 on the day. Right, right. Was, um, yeah, was do, 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 do you sympathise on that? I mean, Cook, who's been, a, you know, he's been, was a fantastic captain. He's been a great servant. He's just been a fantastic role model, and yet he still gets a lot of stick. I sympathise, but I feel like he, I feel like that wouldn't really, you know, he's human. But I don't feel like he's too bothered either way. He looks like the kind of guy who goes out, he trains, yeah. and he goes in and tries to get hundreds for England. Yeah. Which he did then the other day, yeah, didn't and, he? and sometimes he can't. Sometimes yeah. there's a patch where he can't. So, you know, I do sympathise with the fact that it's up and down for him, but I also feel like he... I don't need to worry. He looks like the kind of guy you don't need to worry about. Are you the same? Probably. I don't know. I don't know how to cook. Yeah. I don't know what... You but, know, it, but in terms of that see. character of de dealing with yeah. the spotlight... Yeah, because I, I go out and... And, and try not to let any goals in for anyone that I play for. Yeah. Sometimes you can't do that, sometimes you make mistakes, um, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Uh, I know that I'm going to prepare and, and, and be at the best level I can be at. Yeah, so um, I, I just don't believe in luck. I think when you've saved what, 14 of 54 penalties, yeah. and you've my friend over there, really, really like you. Okay. And she would like a picture with you. Yeah, no. But she's too shy. Can I bring her over? Are you guys going to be here for a bit or are you going? Um, well, I'm going now because I'm going to do my hair. All right, I'll be um, Yeah, no problem. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. Mine, right? Yeah, of course. What's it? Ten more minutes, you're right for that? No, no, I'm good for yeah. any time. Okay. It's just. I love you. All right. No problem. Right. See you guys. Um, yeah, but just looking at the um, of the fourteen that you saved, you, the individuals that you saved from. I mean, sort of like sort of who's who. Yeah, of Wayne, Messi, Slatter, Ronaldinho, Fabregas. I think when he was at um, when he was at Arsenal, yeah. and Frank as well. Yeah, Frank as well. You know, I mean, they're big. That's yeah. not luck. But it's, what is it with you and penalties? Um, that's, a, that's a good return. Isn't yeah. It? Something that 
I'm fascinated by penalties anyway. Um, you know, I love I love the idea of them. I love shootouts. I watch it. if any game, any game. I'm talking any at any level goes to extra time. I will watch it and hope that it's penalties is going to be the end result. Any game. I'm talking like because it distills what you're about. Yeah, it just it just I just love. I just find it fascinating and. Um, I think especially in you know trying to save them, it interests me and in try and come up with different ways of doing things to change the way I've done it all through all through. Um, you know, so I, before I saved the one recently off Wayne, I had a really bad patch in it and we were conceding them for fun and I didn't I yeah. went the right way for one of them. Uh, you know, it goes in it goes in, in stages. But how much practice can you actually do? Because Alan Shields used to go into a stadium the day before in England, the night before in England, take five penalties exactly the way, the opposite way that he was going to put them the next night. How, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much of it psychological. Yeah, I think a really good penalty taker knows how to take a penalty. But everyone, I think there's quite different in how they do it, but I think you do need to practice. I think you do need to practice. Because under Glenn, there was this thing, oh, you can't practice it, you can't. Yeah. But I think I'll always give advice to my penalty taker of if you ever do practice in, in like what you said about Alan there, just make sure you mix up what you're doing. Take right. some seriously, miss some. But have, right, really? but have your one that you that you want to take. Right. But you need to mix it into what you're doing, otherwise, because you know, because there's eyes and there's ears yeah. everywhere. But do you, when the penalty taker's coming up, do you know what his favourite penalty is? I I can I totally convince myself. I know exactly what's going to happen. Right. I can totally convince myself um, that I know what they're thinking. I know whether they're going to stutter or they're going to wait for me or they've got a penalty they need to take or if they're nervous. Yeah. I'm wrong a lot of the time, but I, my head is everything's fine. As soon as the penalty is given in my head, I, thought, I know who's taking it. I, I think I'm, I've got this, and I get it wrong a lot. Yeah. And they score a lot, and I go the wrong way a lot. But I'm at that moment in time. If you were to ask me whether I save it, I say 100% you want to save it. Right. But that's I feel like that's how I, I need to be because it's such a mo it's such a decision moment. You need to be. You can't wait and see. Yeah. You know, like I say, I, I convince myself that I know what's going to happen. Yeah. Even before the game, I convince myself what, what's going to go on. Yeah. What, what do you do when you get someone like a Perlo who just thinks it down the middle? Is it just? Uh, I, what, what, I would you ever stay there? Because it's quite a brave hmm. thing to stay. Definitely now. Definitely now. Not. I, I think it's become such a common penalty. Yeah. Well, the Penenka. The Penenka and just putting your head down and blazing it. You know. I think Mignolet saved one off. Bard's quite recently. Yeah, yeah. Jamie yeah. was just with no, there's no disguise to what he was doing. He just runs up and blazing it as hard as he could. Yeah. But um, you know, they got the Pirlo penalty. It was a huge penalty. It was a huge moment. And to do that, it was just like, well done. Next penalty. Yeah. Well, they're good for you. you know, a goal's a goal. No matter how it goes in, you can see. Yeah. They get one on the tally. It was, and it was a, it was a, it was a special moment in the shootout because they were one down. Yeah. And then it turned out flipping the other way, but it's just one of those things. It was, it was a, it was a goal. And yeah. Moved on in the shootout. Yeah. Do you, do you think you're properly appreciated? Because you think 75 caps, same as seen. Your next cap, you'll go alongside Tom Finney. You know, within by the end of next year, you'll be in the top 15, you know, given you know, a fair win and six or seven internationals. Yeah. You know, you're really, you know, the record books. I mean, people criticise Wayne, but you look at the caps, you yeah. look at the goals. You know, you're 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 heading into that territory. I think um, 75 is it's a, it's an unbelievable achievement. Yeah, it's it's especially it was even more humbling to go back and play for at Shrewsbury Town. Yeah. Um, at the weekend because you know, 75 caps and that with that that's who and where I started because it reminds you the length, the length of the journey how far you come it didn't really remind me it just it just made it just made me smile and I, and I was glad that I'm glad I went and played for against Shrewsbury now rather than when I was 25 Right. And you know everything was just flying. Everything was not nothing wasn't going my way. Kind of thing. Yeah. Nothing. So it would have been nice to go home and I'd have played, and it's whatever. But I'm an I'm an older guy. You know, I've had good and bad happen to me. 
and it was just really nice. Like I felt, it felt really nice to be there. You got a great reaction, didn't you? Yeah, but it, it's it's my town. It's where I went to school. It's where um, all my, you know, my friends. You know, I've still got a strong group of friends. Yeah. My family still live there. Um, you know, you, and with my friends growing up in Shrewsbury and working in Shrewsbury now, they're they're linked to like kind of have your schools don't you but now they're all linked in with the guys that went to the other schools and they're all right. friends so I'm kind of friends with so you're kind of two people away from knowing everyone right I was right. seeing kids after the game doing stuff for the kids and the parents would come, and I, like I went to I knew the parents <laughs> so it was just it was just nice it was really nice it was um but you had a very good game how, how do you focus when you've got that emotional side can you box that yeah, off? yeah bang bang really yeah I wanted to win I wanted to win you know, there was no other result in my head other than winning that yeah. game. Because there were two big saves in that match, wasn't there? Yeah, well, in the end, we were, we were, you know, apart from our young guys, I think we were poor as a team. Yeah. You know, we, we really didn't buy into the FA Cup spirit and let the game, you know, we were beating in tackles, we were doing things right. But, um, yeah, really easy to, to zone out and zone back in. Yeah. Because, you know, whether, whether we'd lost 3-0, I'd made... Terrible mistake. Well, I'd still stayed and done my best to see anyone who needed to see me, or yeah, because um, you know I, I know you know people bump into my family and they bump into my friends and people have, all the way through the years was asked how you know oh so and so asked how you people that I am in contact with or, yeah he sends their best or they've asked like it's it's nice so yeah I know there's a there's good vibes and it was nice to go and be a part of something that was you know just a good feeling and before and after and, and during there was there was some fun had and yeah some some Mickey taking which is which is cool but the, the before and after was nice really yeah nice. could you just just coming back to this thing about are you properly appreciated I mean obviously going back to Shrewsbury was was, was, was poignant but but the 75 caps is a you know there's only one other keeper ahead of that. yeah you know, it's, it's a formidable yeah. achievement. I think the only I think the only way you're going to get um, unargued acclaim is to is to win something on team. Simple as that because that's what people want. But I think up until then, you know, people people are going to have good thing good thoughts about you. People are going to have bad thoughts. Mm. I can't control them. You but know. you've had a great club for it. You know, in the middle of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely in the middle of one. I think um, getting unanimous support and unanimous um, praise is never going to happen, especially now. Like, so, you know, people are going to be given voices who have got good things to say, people are going to be given voices who have got bad things to say. Um, you know, I, I, I feel appreciated by my teammates, I feel appreciated by my family and friends, and I feel appreciated by my by my managers. So they're, they're the kind of people that are the most important to me. Yeah, but, but sorry, a bunch of strangers have just come over. Yeah. See you, so you must get that from the public a lot. Yeah, I get a lot of, you know, you, I, you find that in a football stadium, I'll get pelters from, you know, 360 degrees. I'm getting yeah. tanked by people who are at a distance, um, who pay their money to come in and... I suppose I'm one of those figures where people will aim things at. Um, so why as a goalkeeper or I, just I as a well? That's just kind of where I'm at. At the moment. But you don't need a lifestyle which people go, oh, we don't. It's not. You're a role model. People would say that. I don't know. I, I just try and be as the best best I can be in in any situation. But, but we um, don't see you at the front end of papers. That's so. I don't, so, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that so side does it, of it does works. It, but does it surprise you that you get all fans saying that, or is that just the normal tribal nature of football? Uh, I think I'm just used to it. I think mm. I am. Yeah, I think. But but the the, love, the really good thing is is I find that when I genuinely am one on one with someone, or if someone comes and speaks to me and asks something of me. Um, you know, it's always a nice conversation. There's, I could, you know, there's a handful where someone's actually come and said something terrible or aggressive towards me to my face. And I don't mean that as in like they won't say it to my face, but I mean it in a nice way because of the amount of stuff that gets said from a distance. Yeah. And I've, you've got to be able to kind of brush it off. But um, that that instance there was it, is a really nice thing. And someone, I'll often come and sit back down and say, oh, does it, does that? 
is that annoying or I'm like never it's never annoying it's never yeah. you know whilst people are being respectful and um, nice and how there's I'm um, you know we've got endless time for people yeah is, is, is this something that from your background that these are the values your parents taught you must be you know they've never they've never sat me down and said like you this is how you need to be with people but hmm. you know I'm a I'm trying to I've got that sense of it now being a father so um, but like, I've never been sat down and told how to be, but it must be because um, I feel that I've been I've been shaped in a way. I'm, I'm still my own person, but I've been shaped in a way to... And I think I've just grown up in the business as well. You, if you grow up in the business, you can... I think if you... You're not going to win. If you're going to... If you want to fight all the time, you will be so tired because... Yeah. If you want to focus on the bad stuff and fight with someone saying bad about you, you'll just you'll be fighting 24 hours a day. Yeah. But I think if uh, my way is to keep keep it simple, keep the people um, that I need, you know, I want to be that are really opinions really matter to my career. Yeah. So you know, my my teammates, my family, and my my management. They're the ones I think I need to take a really big interest in. Yeah. Um, anyone else is entitled to their opinion, and you know, as long as they don't overstep the border one way or another, I think it's. Yeah. And 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 all those people you mentioned whose important, whose opinions important, Gareth Southgate, who's been absolutely emphatic in backing you, isn't he? Yeah. He's been uh, he's been great for me, um, and he and he kind of has kept it simple when explaining it. He said. Whenever you've played for me, you've been, you've been bang on, and you've, yeah. you've helped me, my t the team that I'm picking to, to progress. So yeah. um, until that changes, you know, it'll, be, it'll be no different. Well, whenever we talk to him, on the record or off the record, he is absolutely you know, yeah. nailed on that you're England's number one. Yeah, I think I think he's pushed that. He, it's it's kind of one of those spots the captaincy has pushed the striker and maybe the goalkeeper is pushed right. hard so uh, that he needs to give a definitive, that definitive answer yeah. you know whether whether he's saying I'm England's number one I still don't doubt that he can change his decision right you know I, I'm fully aware of that and you know I don't I'm not going to rest on that and I don't think he's doing that um, in any other way other than trying to manage a situation here yeah. which He's a manager, so that's what he needs to do. Yeah, um, it's appreciated, but um, you know I would never rest on it. And you know there's some, there's going to be some big decisions coming up, and um, as long as I've got my name in the mix and I'm in the right place, well, that's the most important thing. What, when you say big decisions for, for him, for the, for, for the you. whole thing, you know, to fit 23 players into oh, a, yeah, yeah. into yeah. A, a squad of you know 40, 50 of us all trying so hard to get in it, yeah, it's it's big. Um, Are you quite excited about it when you look at the young talent coming through? Yeah, I think it's I think it's amazing. I, like to be a part of it, it's I, I love being a part of it. I love seeing I love seeing the guys develop. You know, because um, we've got some good technical players coming through. Yeah. But, but don't you think everyone's saying, "Oh, play the kids, play the kids," and there's an element of that that makes sense because they're fearless. But also, we do need some older heads around. History shows that. Yeah, I feel I feel that you need you need a good balance. I don't know. I don't think there's any better team than having a good balance. But um, you play the guys that you trust, and you feel is mm. going to go out there and win you the game. Whether that's the same eleven right the way through a tournament, or whether that's yeah. picking it like now. I think especially at a World Cup like this, if you want to plan to win it, you need to plan how many games. That's seven games to win. Yeah. 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 If you really want to have the focus of winning seven games, you can almost. You know, if you fall flat on your face and lose it after three, and you've changed the side a few times, it looks yeah. terrible. But uh, now I think people are going to strategically plan with when you've got the the ammunition that we've got, that England have got. Yeah. You could pick 23 players, of, and in different in the same position, you could pick different players to play different roles. Right. I think it's going to be it'll be really interesting how you want to play. It. Yeah. Just, just just one thing on your club situation. Do you need to be playing regularly? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. I think especially to push to play for a push for a starting place. I, think yeah. I definitely need to be playing. There's definitely no question about that, and uh, something that I'm working working every day to, to be back. Yeah, with. yeah. How's, yeah. how's just on? How, how's David been? Is he does he understand the situation? Uh, he does, but his his priority is what is West Ham. So. His priority is, I think he said, he's, he's not the England manager, he's nothing to do with England, so yeah. his priority is, be, is picking the best team for West Ham to 
first and foremost survive in the division and secondly to push up as high on the table as they can. Yeah. So I wanted to take you back to one of the, the saves in particular, Kabai's free kick. Yeah. Do you remember that? What was it? Recently. What, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was it, what's it like dealing with a, how do you set the wall? How does that happen? So, you, you set it as best you can to cover, um, especially that free kick thing is about, is only about 20 yards out. Mm. So to get it up and over was, was, takes a good free kick. So that's why I think the wall, you know, people will say, why do you need a wall? Why don't you just, because when, when you've got the wall, it kind of, I think in the future, there might not be people, there'll be, there will be a goalkeeper soon or a goalkeeper coach or a coach that will say, just don't bother with a wall. You 100% think that'll happen soon. Would you stick them people, people on the post or would you? No, because if, once, once people are too deep, Right. You know, there's nothing stopping someone just coming and standing, not even looking at the ball, just standing looking at you and, yeah. and impeding you. So, but right now, I feel that the best, the best until I'm proven different, is is a is a is a bigger wall, closer is as bigger walls and you yeah. know, imposing wall as you can. Um, that one, the boys were just told to stay as big. You've still got to be aware of the reverse because now there's so many players that will then. They can, they can strike it so hard cleanly now. You can have a ball here, fast, and if the the ball if the strike's there and the ball's here, if you even think about shifting your body weight, it, it, someone could score straight at you. So, so how do you mean reverse? So is this your cricket background? No, no. So say that's um, say that's the penalty area. That's the goal. Yeah. And the free kicks here. Yeah. You'd stand here. The ball would be here. And so Kabai is right-footed, so I, I would class I would class a reverse would be to to really shape to come and hit it over here, over there, and to okay, to really left. whip it back, <coughs> really right. whip it back hard. Uh, I class that as re as reverse and free kick because everything's set up to go to, for him to try and go over the walls. Right. Thing. But sorry, reverse is when he he would then put it to your right. Yeah, yeah, back, back on me because you'd stand because you're going that you've way. You've got an awful lot of the goal here, so. You, you're, you're almost you're almost set to to really have to move big to yeah. your left or to stand and save to your right because the maximum you're going to have to do is a is a is a kind of falling save. You won't actually have to dive. Yeah. To your left, you're going to have to dive. Do you, sorry, do you commit before there's contact no. with the ball? I wow. try my best not to. That's fucking. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't give you much time, and sometimes you think you haven't committed, but you have. Right. But. The thought process is not to is not to commit until it's up and over. Yeah. Do, do, do you ever try to get them going to one side? Do you almost leave a little bit of extra space, just saying? Um, it's such a big amount of space, you've got to go that side. It, it's hard because to say that one because he was so close. I, like you feel like you, if you've got a big strong wall now, a free kick that's becoming more common is for uh, Coutinho has used it a lot. Is to yeah. go underneath the wall. Yeah. So um, you know you. If you, if you had four big guys here and you said jump as high as you can, it, it would be nearly impossible to hit a, a strong free kick up and down. You'd have, right. to, you'd have to do a chip and then you'd just walk over and catch it. Yeah. So that, that changing now, you can't ask the boys to jump too high because you know the, the, the P roll under the, under the wall. But how often does that happen? It's, it's, it's happening a lot more than, Is it? than I expected continue. recently. I, I've only really noticed it with him, but right. I'd imagine it's happening all around the world. I think, yeah. um, Someone, is it, we played Brazil and Marcelo was countering with, with uh, so the, the wall would jump as high as they could and he almost lay down behind the wall. So there's, things are changing all the time. With it. But now you, I don't think you can afford to jump really high, so. But then the further out it is, so then you'd only need three because the, the more likelihood is they can get it over. So you'd be more central, but you've got more, because it's further out, you've got more time to go yeah. both ways. Right. So the further out, the less people you need because you've got more time. Yeah. I feel like when it's right here, I think if, if you've got a decent, if you've got a wall, they've not got, they, they can't smash the ball yeah. up and over because they've not got time. So they'd have to almost chip it, which gives you more time to get across. Right. Further out, they can afford to hit it harder you all have less of a wall, so you'll be you'll be more more central to get yeah. in, in both directions. Which sort of games do you prefer when when you've got the Zlatans and the Kabais and the Messis and the Gutsons, and you are having all that technical skill coming at you? Yeah. Or, I mean, that's probably when we've seen you at your best. Yeah. 
because because you're required, I think, to do more. Um, you know, I've been, especially in City, there was only those kind of games where you'd get consistent attacks because people, if we played um, someone who was lower than us in the, in the Premier League, yeah. and they made, if they scored on one of their attacks, that's almost them, Yeah, you know? So you, you'd, you'd need to make that important one or two saves. But whereas when you play against, played against Barcelona or, you know, PSG or someone like that, whether they're winning or not winning, they're still going to try and score. Yeah. You know, if they're if they're winning one 0 they're going to try and win two 0 and kill right, the game. Right. Whereas if you're playing someone in the Premier League who wasn't, um, you know, as as high in the league, one 0 you're thinking, right, we'll take this. Yeah. As best we can until we have to, and we're not going to try and double it. We'll take it on a counter attack, but we won't be constantly attacking. Yeah. 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 So it dep- kind of depends who you play against. On you could, you know, you can. It all depends as a keeper, you can't chase the game, you have to just stay and, and be in the game as best yeah. you can. Was, was Iceland a very difficult game? Because you knew you were going to have more of the possession. Yeah, yeah, it was hard because we conceded two so early Yeah, and they, uh, they'd they proved all through the tournament that they could defend. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then that was it, it was us just trying to trying to blow the house down, but we couldn't. Yeah. You, you look absolutely devastated at the end of that. Yeah. I was, you're, you're patriotic, aren't you? Yeah, I was hurt. I was hurt, you know. I, I played a, I played a big part in the game for the wrong reason. You know, I should have saved the second goal. But um, whether they'd scored two screams, I'd have been, this, I'd have had the same feeling. Yeah. You know? So why should you save the second one? Just something that I feel I should save. I want to be at the level I'm at. You know, there's plenty of goals that go in. I think, but like I say, that I was still able to walk off the pitch because I tried. I trained. I tried. I'd given everything. It just didn't work. Yeah. But um, I really felt good about that tournament yeah. and what we had, and we, and we, and we, and we left, definitely left unfinished business in that tournament. Yeah. To leave any tournament's hard, but you know, when we were just, it just, it just didn't feel like the right time. But it obviously yeah. was our time. So, so are you optimistic going into this tournament? Yeah, very. Yeah. 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 I, I wouldn't go. You know, I'd, I'd struggle to have any other other mindset. Yeah. Um, in anything. I'm kind of optimistic in everything I do. I, I, I want to. I see the best in what we've got. Um, I, I, I see a best case scenario. Yeah. You don't really see the worst case. You know, I yeah. don't think you can afford to kind of think like that. As soon as you start thinking like that, I don't feel like you're uh, you're ready for the fight. Yeah. What, what, what a World Cup's been like for you? Because the first one obviously was frustrating. Because you were. The first one was frustrating, but you know, heartbreaking as well. Um, I've never. If I were to take one experience from it, from sitting on the bench um, for anyone, you, you're in the game and you support your team and you want them to do well, but being part of a World Cup squad, I've never kicked balls like that before from, from the side, never. You're just totally involved, oh, engaged. Really? Mental. Because it's the World Cup, because it's England? It's England, you've got your, the, the away support of England is like takes over you, takes over your, your feelings, takes over your passion. Um, I remember when Frank scored, well, didn't score. Yeah. I've never run, we were about eight yards on the pitch, because so that would have got us back to two yeah. all, and yeah. it, it, back in a, in a game against Germany. Um, so yeah, I, I, felt, I felt frustration because during the tournament, because obviously I wanted to play, but I didn't feel anything towards any of the team. It was just, you know, it's, it's as you speak to anyone, it's not easy giving your best every day and being yeah. a real carrot. But you know, I loved being there for Greeny. I loved being there for for Jamo during the tournament. Yeah, uh, and the team as best I could. But yeah, support wise. I mean, Brazil. The first game in Brazil, we're up the Amazon. Yeah, and they were thousands of England fans. Yeah, they were there. The the, the away support of England fans. Yeah. You know, is even in Malta, it was. Yeah, it was difficult because you know it wasn't positive vibes. But I don't, I don't reckon there's anywhere, any other country that could, could travel and support like we do. Especially, yeah. it wasn't not needed. But when it's needed in the away games, you know what I'm talking. You know when we when we needed a draw. I think we got a draw nil nil in Ukraine for the yeah for the was it for the World Cup qualification yeah all the way to Ukraine yeah. Do you, do you appreciate it even more because you're probably closest to them? Aren't you? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. You know, and you look, you look behind. I mean, and and they're, they're putting all the, the yeah. flags out. I've been everywhere. I've seen, I've seen how different people do it, and 
um, it's strong. It's really strong, and you know the emo And I've got friends that do it. You know, so what? Well, who travel? Yeah, I've right. got friends who are emotionally part of it and been a part of it and told me it's the best time of their lives. I've also had friends who were mixed up in the pre-Russia game, saying it's one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Oh, what in Marseille? Yeah, were it, seriously. Were yeah, they all right? It was. It was. Yeah, they they got they were fine, but it was um, it was bad. It was well when they got ambushed by the Russian fans. Yeah, it was in the in the town centre that day. Yeah. It was it was naughty. I think so. But like, and then but they'd still turn up at the next game, and I imagine they'll they'll all be there in Russia. Russia. Remarkable, it's, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine if it goes right? Yeah. If it goes right, I'd, well, whether I'm playing or not, or involved, I wouldn't care. I'd, I'd be yeah. involved somewhere. I'd either be a fan or. Yeah. Would you Would you travel as a fan? I mean, we saw Michael Carrick and Phil Jones went in the Anfield Road End when Liverpool played there. Sorry, when United played yeah. in Anfield. Uh, Have you ever done that as a as a as a City player or anything? Just no, when you're injured I've, or. I've never really been injured, so <laughs> that's the that's the crazy thing. Um, yeah. But I would, because you you know you build great friendships and. And you, I, like, I, I want, I want my people to do well. I want players to do well. I want my yeah. team to do well. So, 100% would, um, if the right situation came about, yeah, to yeah. do it. So, yeah, good. Thank you. That's On that note, that's uh, fascinating. No, good. Really, good. really interesting. Have you, have you seen the? Um,